Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. How are you? Uh, <laughs> rushing around. Okay, so, <clears throat> so two days ago in lab, we, uh, well, I mean, you, you could, could have been working on anything, but at any rate, the, the task of the day was, what, what was it? The division problem. Uh, good. So, uh, any question about about that, the division problem? That is to say, not not the division into quotients and remainders, but the division to uh, decimal places using Newton Raphson. Raphson. Okay. So today is the fifth. Okay. So we're going to try something new-ish. Uh, so far, the, the programming assignments have all been accompanied by a written homework which has a math function in it. And more or less, more or less, your programming task is to um, <coughs> implement that math function in MATLAB. That, that's more or less the, the programming task. So now we're going to do it a little differently. So now we're just going to describe ac accurately, precisely, what the function is supposed to do, but I'm going to stop supplying the math function. Okay, and the, the purpose is, is now you're going to have to figure out how to turn uh, instructions, like written instructions, but not, not a math function itself, into a function. Okay, so then generally speaking, you know, when you want to actually write a program or something like that, us usually it is not a matter of just translating one math <laughs> from one language to another. Usually it's, oh, it's supposed to do this. <laughs> and even worse, in real life, you, usually when someone says it's supposed to do this, they don't tell you all the details. <laughs> they leave out some fine details. So we'll try not to leave out any details, but I'm going to not give you the, the math function. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we're going to play a game. So the game is uh, Guess the Natural. So what it is, is, is uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have uh, a, a natural number in mind, and remember in our class the naturals include zero. I have a natural in mind, and your goal is to guess uh, the natural number with as few guesses as possible. Okay, and there's infinitely many of them, so in principle I could, I could be thinking of one that's really big. So here's kind of a, here, here's a method that will work, but will take a whole bunch of guesses. So what's going to happen is I have one in mind, and you, you can ask me, how do you respond to this guess? And I can only give you three responses. I can say, your guess is too low, your guess is exactly right, or your guess is too high. Okay, so here's, here's one way you could, you could for, sh for sure, every time, come to the correct answer. You could guess zero, and then if I don't say that's the right answer, then you can guess one. <laughs> and if that's not the right answer, then you can guess two, et cetera. You just keep guessing them one at a time. And no matter what natural I have in my head, you will figure, that out, figure out which one it is. Okay, that in the end, that's because of the, the, the well-orderedness principle of the naturals. So suppose that in my mind I have 2370, right? This is the, <laughs> this is the number that, well, yeah. This is the number that, that I'm holding in my head. Then you could evaluate, you could, I could give you my evaluation for all, for all of the naturals. <clears throat> I could give you my evaluation for all of the naturals. And what it would be is that all the naturals zero through two, three, six, nine, they would all be, my response would be that all of these are too small. And nece <clears throat> necessarily, Necessarily, it must be the case that only finitely many of them are too small. 
right? It could, it could not be the case that infinitely many of them are too small, because then I couldn't possibly be thinking of a natural. Okay, so, so as a result of the well-orderedness of the, of the naturals, the procedure of guessing them one at a time will definitely work. But surely we can do better than that. Okay, so <clears throat> here's how we'll, here's how we'll do better than that. Okay, so then I need a volunteer. Okay, so then this is, so you'll, you'll be the volunteer. What I need from you is this. So, so think of a natural, but don't tell me. And then I'm going to ask a sequence of questions by giving you a, a natural um, guess, and you have to respond to me in one of the three ways. And so that means that uh, you either say, that your guess is too small, your, your, your guess is just right, or uh, your guess is too big. Okay. <clears throat> so, so this is just a demo of this, playing this game, and I'll call this the up phase. So I'm gonna, so my first question is to ask, how do you respond to one? One is too small. Okay, so my first guess was one, this is too small. Okay, how do you respond to two? Too small. Uh, two has two O's. Okay, so so far it seems like I'm just guessing sequentially. Okay, but now my, I, my pattern should become more clear. So now I'm going to ask about four. Too small. Eight. Too small. Sixteen. Too small. Okay, and, and <laughs> outside, outside, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, uh, just, just for so we all know how more or less how this is gonna go. Is this number that you have in your head in the millions? <laughs> no. Okay. Good. <laughs> it's, it's less than that. Okay. Okay. So 32. How do you respond? Okay. 64. 128. Okay, so then now, if it's not entirely clear, uh, what is it, how am I guessing? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing sequential powers of two. Not, not sequential like one, two, three, four, five, six. Not sequential in that way, but sequential powers of two. <clears throat> so, too small. <laughs> well, you can change it. I'll, I, I, none of us would ever know. But I'm not that far away from 2370 anyway. <laughs> too, sm too small, right? Okay. 1024. Okay. So here's the first time where we said too big. Okay. So now, as a result of this, as a result of this, uh, I can therefore conclude that the, the the natural in question is between what two nat uh, is between what two naturals? Five thirteen. Five thirteen, right? So it's between five thirteen. So if I if I name if just to give a name to what she's hiding from me, uh, I mean that's the game. Uh, it's n nothing ne nothing negative is implied there. So, so the number that's hidden is between those two naturals. Okay, between those two naturals. The, the smallest natural it could possibly be is 513, and the largest natural it could possibly be is 1023. So it, we could count the number of naturals in here. It's about 512, or it, I might be off by one. It, it's on the order of 500 uh, numbers are in there. And I don't need to keep increasing my guess because I've already, I've already bracketed it between two numbers. Okay, so now I, I have to switch to a different strategy. And I'll call this the down strategy. So here's something I could do. From here, now that I've got it between 513 and 1023, 
Uh, I could just start guessing sequentially. I could say, is it 513? No. Is it 514? No. Etc. And I'd have, at most, around 500 more guesses. Probably around 250 because, assuming that she made her, made her guess uniformly, randomly, then in about half the guesses I should have it. Right? So I could, I could start guessing sequentially. But is there a better way? Guess the mean. Yeah. Let's guess, let's guess uh, the, the, the point that's halfway between them. Okay. So in particular, in particular, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two endpoints, these two endpoints, and compute their, uh, their average. And because they're both, in, in this specific case, because they're both odd, um, when you add them together, the result is even, because the sum of two odd naturals is an even natural. And so when you divide them by two, it's still going to be natural. Okay. But what if, what if it, it so happened, it, it didn't happen, but what if it so happened that this was 1, 0, 2, 4? Then if I added these two together, and divided by two, I wouldn't have a natural, right? Specifically, what, what I have is five one three plus one zero two four divided by two. I'd have that number seven six eight and a half. So it doesn't make any sense for me to guess seven six eight and a half. Right, so we, we need to somehow make a choice of what if we ever, what, what, if, the, what if the average is, is ever a half, what should we do, yeah? Yeah, so, so there's, there's, in computer science anyway, was that what you were going to say? Okay, that, that's, that's true, but, but uh, I want to make sure that the point is clear. So that uh, when you're playing guess the natural, you should always guess the natural, right? <laughs> you, you should never guess 32 and a half or 32.1. You should always be guessing 32 or 33 or something like that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so yes, then in computer science, there's, there's a function that's typically called floor. And whether or not it's called floor to you depends on your math education. It, very frequently it's not called floor, it's called something else. So before I start doing the down phase, I want to remind you of uh, the following uh, definitions. And that is that this so that is to say they look like brackets but only with feet. Okay, they don't have hats. They're not wearing hats. Uh, this <coughs> Is called, uh, for, is called floor for computer science folks, but it's also called in math the greatest integer function. Greatest integer function. So what it is is that the floor, or greatest integer, of x is uh, the greatest integer less or equal x. <laughs> or if you like, from the computer science point of view, it's that take the number and round it down to the nearest integer. So, for example, what is the floor of, say, uh, 5.7? 5. 5. So, because 5 is the greatest <coughs> integer that's less or equal to 5.7. The next integer bigger than 5 is 6, but that's not less or equal. 
Uh, similarly, what is the floor of eight? Still eight? Eight. Because that is the greatest integer that is less or equal to eight. And then, somewhat disturbingly, sometimes, what is the floor of negative 3.1? Negative four. <laughs> it's negative four because let's consider what integers are are less or equal to negative three point one. So is negative five less or equal to three point one? Ne negative three point one. That's true. Is negative four less or equal to negative three point one? Yes. Is negative 3 less or equal to negative 3.1? No. no, right? This one's bigger. So among these, among these possibilities, negative 4 is the greatest integer that is less or equal to uh, negative 3.1. And this is, this is <laughs> the reason why mathematicians call it the greatest integer function and not the floor, because when you think of it like floor, then you might, you know, you can kind of lose track that, that that works perfectly well when the input is positive, that you're supposed to round down, but when, then when you try to think when the, when the input is negative, rounding down kind of ends up doing this thing that's unintuitive. Okay, so it's called the greatest integer function. Okay, uh, strictly speaking, I don't need to say this part because we're not going to use it, but what's the counterpart to floor? Ceiling. Ceiling. <laughs> Uh, and that one is also called the least integer function. <coughs> uh, so, it is, how, how do you suppose it's denoted? Yeah, it's a bracket, but it only has a hat on, no feet. So the greatest integer function, or sorry, the, the least integer function uh, of, say, 7.1 is what? 8. And how about... The ceiling of six, six, and how about the ceiling of negative two point one? Negative two. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Good. Any question about these? Okay. So so we lost track because I because I went off the rails for a minute. So do you remember that we were playing a game? <laughs> find yeah. find the get, guess the natural. Okay. So. So what, specific, what is the specific strategy I'm going to use to guess now that I've established the natural that I'm trying to find is between these two numbers? Take the floor of the mean. Yeah, the floor of the mean. So now back to this, I'm going to guess. So guesses. Is I'll compute the floor of 513 plus 1023 over 2, and that happens to be what? 7, 6, 8, I think. Okay, so how do you respond to 7, 6, 8? Too big. Okay, now, as a result, what can I conclude? Do you have a question? Uh, so, so as a result, what's my new interval? Yes. So now I've established that it must be between 513 and 767. Notably, before I made this guess, there were about 500 possibilities. Now that this guess has been made and the response received, how many possibilities are there? About 250. All right. So then this one guess, we didn't establish the answer, but we did eliminate half of all the possibilities. Okay, so now the, the, rest of the, the rest of the trick is just to continue. So now, from now on, every guess that I make is either going to establish the answer or it's going to eliminate half of all possibilities. So there's a, on the order of 250 uh, possibilities. What is the maximum number of, of further guesses I have to make? So if you half it every single time, then you're halving them out every single I don't know. Eight. 
About eight. About eight guesses is all I have to make. Because right now there's 256 possibilities. And then the next guess I make, I either have it right, or there's only 128 possibilities. And then the next guess, I either have it right, or there's 64 possibilities. And then the next guess, I either have it right, or there's 32 possibilities. So the real question, the answer to the question, because there's 256 possibilities, the question of what is the maximum number of further guesses I have to make, how, what's the name for how you calculate that? Log base 2, right? Log base 2 of the number of possibilities. And the logarithm base 2 of 256 is 8. Is it not 256? Is it 255? So 7, 6, 7 minus 5, 1, 3 is 254. Uh, so it's really 255 because uh, it, it's 256 less 1 because we have to include the endpoints. Right, so it would be like if, if, if I said the, num the, the, the possibilities are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, to 10, then how many possibilities is that? 11. 11, right? Because you have to be sure to count the first one. Okay, so there's really 255. Okay, I agree. Uh, fine, so now my next guess <coughs> will be 7, 6, 7 plus 5, 1, 3 over 2, the floor of this. which is 640. Okay, so how do you, too small? Okay, so now what's the new interval? So let's write down that it was too small. So now what's the interval? 641 is the, is the least it could be, and 767 is the most. Okay, so now this is, I suspect 127 or something like that. <laughs> Let's do it. Is it? 767 minus 641 and then add 1, 127. So 127 possibilities. Okay. Uh, fine. So 767 plus 641 divided by 2, floor of this. Okay, so that turns out to be 704. So how do you respond to 704? Too small. Okay, so the new interval is 705 is the least possible and 767 is the most possible, is the, is the greatest possible. Okay. So 705. <coughs> Okay, so now my, my next guess is the floor of 767 plus 705 over 2. So that would be 736. How do you respond to 736? Too big. Okay. So, uh, the new interval is then 737, seven. no, too big, too big, so 705 is the least and 735 is the most. Okay, so now how many possibilities are there? 31, 31 possibilities. Because it's the difference of these two endpoints and one more because you have to count the first one. Okay. <coughs> so seven, three, five, plus seven, zero, five over two. Okay, so my next guess is seven, seven, three, five. Plus 
705 over 2. Uh, so, so that guess is 720. How do you respond to 720? That's the answer. OK. So in the first place, I hope everyone is convinced that this strategy uh, is going to work every time. It's going to work every time because here, there's, there's two aspects to the strategy. And that is that in the first place, you have to figure out what numbers it's between. OK, so then that's, that's this first phase. OK, so you keep guessing sequential powers of 2. It's, it's good to guess sequential powers of 2 because, l let me ask, suppose that, uh, suppose that the unknown number is n just to give it a name. What is the max in this phase when you're trying to figure out what numbers it's between? What's the maximum number of guesses you would have to do supposing you guess sequential powers of 2? So like for example, the number for this game was 720. Right. Be because unknown to us, except her, <laughs> the number was 720. So as soon as I guessed 1024, I was finished get making bigger and bigger guesses. Okay, so what's the maximum number of guesses that you have to make? Yeah? Is that like two times the long next two of the guess? Well, for, for this, for just for this phase, it's, it's just, one, just one times the log base two. Right, and then second time for the max possibility of that. Right. So what I want you to see is that, is that what is the logarithm base 2 of 720? So, by the way, how do you compute logarithm base 2 on a calculator? Right, because I've got a log base 10 button and I've got a natural log button. Log of the number of the log of 2. Right. So, so the natural log of 720 divided by the natural log of 2, well, this number is 9.49. Uh, of course, I can't make 0.49 guesses. Okay, guesses come in, in integral amounts. So really what we mean is the ceiling, right? The ceiling of this number. How many guesses did I actually have to make? One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so I guess it's really ceiling plus one. Okay, interesting. So, but at any rate, that that plus one is not not too big a deal. The plus one is not too big a deal. Really, what what what's controlling the size is the logarithm base two. Then, then, once you've got it between two powers of two then how many further guesses do you have to make? Well, logarithm base 2 of the difference. Probably throw in a ceiling there and, and probably add a 1 also. Okay, so does everyone see that this strategy should surely work every time? And in particular, if I had guessed sequentially, that is to say, I could, I could say, is it 0? No. Is it 1? No. Is it 2? No. Then we could have sat here while I, while I asked, and it would have taken 720 steps. It would have worked. But the procedure that you witnessed, did it use less than 720 steps? Yeah, significantly less. Furthermore, suppose that, suppose that the hidden number was on the order of 4 billion. Then I could have asked on the order of 4 billion questions. Is it zero? No. Is it one? No. And I could have made it <laughs> in principle. But the most you overall need is maybe 64. Yeah, but the most guesses you need to, if, if the answer is on the f order of 4 billion, is you need to do about log approximately logarithm base 2 to figure out what numbers it's between. And then you need approximately further logarithm base 2 to take it down to a single point. And as it happens, the logarithm base 2 of 4 billion is, is about 32. So even if, even if, even if she was hide, hiding the number uh, 4 billion from us, it really only would have taken about 64 guesses. Yes? Could we start with a bigger number than 1? Like, the bigger number just bigger? Just like, since most numbers are over 4? 
Okay. I agree entirely that most numbers are over four. Do you also do you agree do you agree also that most uh, numbers are over four billion? <laughs> so, you know, you could you could start out, for example, by guessing. Well, is it four billion? <laughs> and for questions, <laughs> yeah, for questions that we're going to deal with, probably the answer is going to be that's too big. But then, then you'd have to do the exact same shrinking thing. Yes. Does MATLAB automatically do the thing where for integers over a certain size it will switch to a uh, multiple precision format? It does not. Okay. So th this is a this is a uh, a matter that I've been trying to avoid mostly. Okay. So so in, in math we have these these uh, abstract ideas of integers and real numbers and. In, in, in math, given an integer, you can always add one and the result is always an integer. Okay, but there's something a little bit surprising about, the mach about MATLAB and, and, most, and, and the machines that we use, and that is that there is something called an integer that the machine has, but it's not a math integer. So specifically, uh, specifically the integers on uh, on the computer if you happen to be using a 32-bit computer once you get to the integer that is 2 th which it, the, the the integer which is 2 to 32 minus 1 so so that's an integer 2 to exponent 32 minus 1 is on the order of is a little bit more than 4 billion if you add one more to it <laughs> then you'll get zero <laughs> okay so uh, on the machine anyway uh, this is the way it works. So f furthermore, uh, the real numbers that we use in math, right, the sum of two real numbers is always real. Uh, but on, the, on MATLAB, uh, the numbers that we deal with, like when you're doing, doing the division problem from last week, uh, you see decimal places. And it's, it seems as if that number is, re is, is a real number, but it's actually not. <laughs> For example, uh, if you take a real number, say 1, and you add a very small number to it, and just naming this very small number epsilon, the result is a different real number. So 1 is different than 1 plus epsilon. But this is not true on the machine. So if you add a really big number to a really small number, then that really small number might just be, in a sense, overwhelmed by the big number and the result doesn't change. <laughs> But these are things that I'm avoiding talking about in our class. And uh, if and when you take numerical analysis, it will become important. So a, a prototype example of how it becomes important and one of the things you must do is that in numerical analysis, if you're going to add up a whole bunch of numbers, a whole bunch of floating point numbers, things that we're thinking about as real numbers, and if also some of them are quite big, relatively speaking, and some of them are quite small, relatively speaking, then it is simply imperative that you sort all those numbers and you add together the small ones first, and, you add to, and, and then you add to them the bigger ones last, because if you start with the big ones, you'll lose, you will lose track of the small ones. And in numerical analysis, this is called catastrophic loss of precision. And it makes a big difference, you know, like the difference between things like our spacecraft successfully <laughs> entered the atmosphere or our spacecraft bounced off the atmosphere and then blew up. Okay, <clears throat> but, but we're not talking about that. <clears throat> I'm just letting you know that there's important things to ahead. <clears throat> okay, so I, we, we name those phases the up phase and the down phase. So now I'd like to explain why, uh, why I referred to them as the up phase and the down phase. Okay. <clears throat> so here's a number line. But really, even though I'm drawing it as a line, I'm only interested in the naturals. I'm not interested in the the reels in between. Okay, so we've got uh, <clears throat> the least natural is zero, and then one. 
Uh, let's see. I'll go up to. I'll go up to 16. So 16, and I'm going to draw the numbers on the bottom. Hmm. And now that I've thought about it, this line is way too high. So I hate it when instructors do this, but I'm going to do it. So I'm going <laughs> to throw that one away. And I'm going to draw the line down here. So uh, 0, 16, and then halfway in between, that's 8, and then half, that's 4, and this one 12, and half, 2, 6, <coughs> so night 10, 14, and then 1. Five, seven, <coughs> nine, zenite, <coughs> eleven, thirteen, fifteen. So, what I want you to imagine is that we're going to organize all these naturals uh, in the in the following way. <coughs> And that is that uh, when, I, when I first guess one, let, let's say that the true answer, just for sake of argument, is 13. So the true answer is 13. I want to show you how the, the guessing strategy works. As I guess, well, is it one? And then what's the response? That's too small. Okay, so then uh, the next guess I'm going to make is 2. So there's something here, and I'm going to guess 2. And then what's the response to that one? That's too small. <clears throat> so now I'm going to guess, well, is it 4? Too small. <clears throat> What's the next one I'm going to guess? Eight. <clears throat> okay, and what's the response there? Too small. And then I guess, well, what about... Sixteen. And then what's the response? Too big. Okay, so what I want you to see is that it is like we're going up, 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 up. And very quickly, very quickly, this is going to get very tall because we're doubling, we're, it's, it's growing exponentially. Okay, so we're going to make it very far to the right quite quick. Okay, <clears throat> so now we've established, okay, it's got to be between these two powers of two. So the, ne the name of the next phase, I had called it the down phase the down phase. So the next question I'm going to ask, so I'll, I'll make this 13 be blue, so the true answer is blue. Because, uh, because it's between 8 and 16, and really we're, we're holding that to be uh, the least one, it could be as 9, and the, least, and the greatest one, it could be as 15, what am I going to guess? 12. So now from here, I'll guess 12. <clears throat> and then what's going to be the response? Too small. So that means now the least possible one is, uh, is 13, and the greatest possible is 15. So now what am I going to guess? 14. 14. Okay, then what's the response? Too big. So now the least possible is 13, and the greatest possible is, because I guess, because I guess 14, what's the greatest possible? Also 13. Also 13, right? So at this, at this stage, uh, we've established that 
Okay, among the naturals, it has to be greater than or equal to 13 and also less or equal to 13. So do you, do you observe? We have, there's no need to guess any further. We have arrived at the answer. So I called the first one the up phase because what you're doing is you're going up, you're going up on this graph structure, and then the down phase is you're going down on the same graph structure. So now let's draw the exact graph structure that we're traversing. So, 0, 16, 8, 4, 12, 2, 6, 10, 14, is in there, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. So now I'm going to ignore all the guesses for a minute, <coughs> and I want you to see the following. <coughs> that, uh, well, how do I want to do this? So like this, we'll take, we'll take pairs. Uh, I'm trying to draw this right the first time because I'm drawing it in red. How's it supposed to be organized? Sorry, I'm tr trying to make sure I don't get off by one. Okay, so let's draw it like this. So we've got a node up here, and it's above 8. So on the one hand, uh, we have things that could be less or equal to 8, and then on the other hand, we have things that could be greater than 8. So we've got two possibilities. So for 16, these are, so this is, this is at level 16. Uh, these are things that are, on the one hand, uh, less, or e uh, less than 8, and these things are greater or equal to 8, but less than 16. So now we can split again. So these would be uh, split this way. <coughs> really, I, s I see the problem now is I should have drawn the tree first and then the number line second. The, pro <laughs> the problem is that, I'm, that I drew the number line first and the tree second. Okay. So there's four possibilities. Eight possibilities. And then now 16 possibilities. <laughs> Should have drawn the tr should have drawn the number line after this. So this one to there. Now everything's off. Well, sorry. I tried to make it beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> so now, uh, the way, the, way the, the game works is that zero is handled kind of as, as a special case. So if you guess one and the response is too high, that, that, and the response is that that's too big, then that's handled as a special case that, oh, the answer must be zero. So then, supposing that the true answer is 13, 
then you're starting here at this node and you ask, is it, uh, is it one? So the answer would be, no, that's too small. So that means move up. And then you ask, well, is it two? Because that's the biggest one you can reach from this node. And then the answer is no, you must move up. And then what's the biggest number that can be reached from this node going downward? Four is the biggest number that you can reach. So I ask, is it four? The answer is no. So let's go up and then I ask, well, what's the biggest one that I can reach from this node by going down? Eight is the biggest number. And so then the answer is, okay, no, that's too small. Then I move up and say, well, what's the biggest number I can reach by going down from this node? 16. So I ask about 16. And then the, the, the response is, oh, that's too big. So that means, oh, it's time to start going down. So what's the biggest? So now I start calculating the midpoint. Okay, so I've established it's got to be between these two. And so now the question is, is when I go down, do I need to go left or do I need to go right? Okay, so then from here I ask, well, how about 12? Is 12 too big or too small or just right? Too small. Because that's too small, that means that I've eliminated the, the choice of going to the left. I have to go to the right because I guessed something that was too small, so I need to move bigger. And so then now, what's the midpoint of these things between 13 and 15 is 14. So now I guess 14, and the response is what? Too big. Too big. So then I move here, and I've, since I've already established that it couldn't possibly be 14, logically the place that I'm at is it's between 13 and 13. Ah, okay. So the reason why it's called the reason why I called them up and down is because of this. It's because the trajectory that you follow on this tree. You're going up, and then you're going down. And logically, this tree exists for all naturals and gets quite tall. Okay, but even to, even to express four billion naturals, even to express 4 billion naturals, uh, the height of the tree is only 32. So it's quite bushy. Okay, good. Any question about this idea? So, now let's make some fine uh, remarks about the up phase and the down phase. And remember what I'm trying to do. I'm, pur I'm purposefully trying not to write down a math function. I'm, I'm, I'm purpose, purposely trying to be circuitous so that it forces the issue of you, of, of you having to do that part. Okay, so let's make some remarks about the up function. So there's a special case. What if, what if, Uh, let's back up. So the up function needs to return values a and b, two values, such that uh, a is less or equal to the hidden number, which is unknown, but we're calling in, is less or equal to b. So that, that's what it needs to do. It, it tells you, you could think, an interval of naturals that's inclusive, uh, that the hidden number must be between. So what if, what if 1 is too big? Then, then, as a human being, you can logically conclude, oh, the answer must be 0. Uh, but the up function is supposed to return two numbers. A and B. So what are the numbers that it's supposed to return? Zero and zero, zero right? <laughs> on the one hand, it must be greater or equal to zero. On the other hand, <laughs> it must be, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? On the other hand, it must be uh, less or equal to zero. So in this case, it, mu it must be the case that A is zero and B is zero. 
Okay. What other kind of special cases might there be? So what if, what uh, if, uh, what if you guess Uh, and your guess is, say, 2 to exponent k. What if this is too small? Yeah, you should, you should then guess. Uh, the next thing you should guess is 2 to the k plus 1. Okay, so notably, any time that you, you make a guess and your guess is too small, you're unable to make a conclusion. That means that, that there's work yet to do. And for what if, what if, uh, the guess of 2 to exponent k is, uh, is right. What if it's right? A equals to k and b equals to k. Right, Co correct. Because you're supposed to respond with two numbers. You're supposed to respond with, with a lower bound and also an upper bound. So if you just get super lucky on the way up, then, well, just, then, then you've established that the upper and lower bound are the same. Okay. So we've we have we have we have dealt with what if we we we've dealt with what if it's too small, so the, the not special cases. Uh, we've dealt with what if your guess is too small, we've dealt with what if what if your guess is just right. Uh, what's the last thing we have to deal with? What if what if your guess is too big? then how are you supposed to respond? So A is, so we need, a, we, need a form, we need formulas for A and B. So what's the formula for A? Right. So A should be the previous guess that you made. So like if you just guessed 64, and the response was, that's too big, then what's the lower bound? 33, right? It's the previous power of 2, but one more than that. It's got to be one more than that because you already established that it couldn't have been that power of 2. Right? So if you guess 512, and the response is, that's too big, then what is the lower bound? 257, because it's the previous power of 2, and one more. And then the upper bound would be, yes, this power of 2 and one less. OK. Any question about this one? So that's how you'd go up. OK. So now, the way you go down. We have to assume that, okay, uh, what we actually have, what we actually have is bounds. We have boundaries. We have uh, a natural which is less or equal to the true answer, and we have uh, a, a second natural that is greater or equal to the new answer. So how will we tell, there, there's, kind of, there's really two ways to tell when you have arrived at, at the correct answer. What are the two ways to tell? Could you say if A equals B? Yeah. Right. What if it so happened that the bounds were the same? Then there, would there be any need to 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 uh, consult your adversary anymore? No need, right? No need. So 
What if A and B are the same? Same. Okay, then what's the answer? Yeah, then the answer, which I guess we'll call N, N must be A, which is also B. Okay. So that so in, in that case there would be no need to there would be no need to consult the oracle <laughs> the your your adversary whatever you want to call it. Okay. Suppose that's not true that the bounds are not in fact the same. What should you do? Yeah. Do the floor now now you need more information. You you ask you ask about uh, the floor of the floor of the average. Uh, so you make so suppose that you make your guess. So you calculate you calculate your guess M, and then suppose uh, so your guess M, and now you're going to ask you're going to ask about your guess M. Well, how many different ways could the oracle respond? Right, so then there's, from here, there's three possibilities, okay? So you calculate your guess M, and then suppose that the response that, the response is that M is too small. Then, are you able to, are you able to make a conclusion about the answer? What, are you, let me, let me be precise. Are, do, if, if M is too small, then are you able to say what the answer is? No. But what, what are you able to do? You're able to change the bounds. So that means you need to continue. And what will be the new value of A? Will be, yes, will be M plus 1. And what will be the new value of B? Same as before, right? B is, B is un, the upper bound is unchanged. But the lower bound has now been moved. What's another way that the oracle could respond? Yeah, they could say it's too big. Okay. Then what's the new lower bound? Still A, right? The new lower bound is still A. And what's the new upper bound? M minus 1. How else could the oracle respond? We haven't taken care of it being right yet. So it could respond with it being right? Yeah. <laughs> so, M, so M is just right. This is like Goldilocks, right? This porridge is just right. Then how? Do, then what's so? Then what? Just n equals m. Yeah. Then n is m. So notice that there's there's two ways to stop. One of the ways is to stop immediately when the if if it so happens that the oracle responds with yes. Okay. Uh, then uh, another way is well, what if what if uh, say for example. Um, the, the, you knew that the answer was li like we did on the previous example. We knew the answer was either 13 or 14 or 15. And then because 14 was the midpoint, I guessed 14. And then that was too big. So then that means that the new, the new upper bound is 13. So the answer is either 13 or 13, right? <laughs> then, it, then it's not necessary to ask anymore. And now you've made a conclusion. So you, did, you, didn't need to, you didn't need to confirm with the oracle that 13 was right. You were able to conclude that without, without asking. So the reason why I'm saying this is because the way, the way this, your program will be tested is I'll be counting the number of guesses that you make. And if you make too many guesses, then your program is by definition wrong. Okay, so you're going to have to have just the right number of guesses. Good. Yes? Is that our, our only limit for 
I'm sorry? Is that our only amendment? <clears throat> so can we do anything else like as long as it has the same uh, the right amount of guesses? I guess I don't I don't understand your question. Like is there any other limits to the code rather than just the amount of guesses? So well you have to get the answer right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for for one thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, so you have to you have to come to the correct <laughs> You have to come to the correct answer, yeah. with, 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 and you have to do it within the correct number of guesses. Because, you know, in, in principle, like I said, you could just guess sequentially. Yeah. Right? But, but then if I say, uh, if the hidden number is in the billions, then your guess should be in the, the number of guesses should be in the hundreds at most, not in the, not in the billions. <laughs> Good. Yes? So, like, I know we use two a lot, and because it's, like, I don't know, it's nice with the computers and stuff, if you use different numbers, like you divided by 1.5, or you started your, like, mm -hmm. if you did that kind of thing, can you reduce your number of guesses, or is it always pretty much the same number as if you just do the average? And so let me, let me see if I can restate your question. Uh, l let me say it like this. What would be so wrong with, say, uh, multiplying by 3 on the up phase? Why don't we do that? Well, it would work. It would work. Uh, but the, the problem with the down phase, problem with the down phase is that um, <clears throat> when, when you is, then what would you do? Would you want to divide the number of guesses into thirds? So you could guess like, you could guess, say, instead of guessing the midpoint, you could guess the two-thirds point. So the problem with guessing the two-thirds point is, if, if you get it right, well, terrific, right? If the oracle says you got it, okay, fine. If the oracle says uh, that that's too big, then now two-thirds of the guesses are remaining. If the answer is that that's too small, then only one-third of the guesses are remaining. So that's good. So you would have eliminated two thirds. So you're either going to eliminate one third of the possibilities or two thirds of the possibilities. Yeah. In the in the end, the answer to the question is the, the most serious answer to the question is is that it it doesn't it won't matter. And, and the reason why it won't matter, uh, even if you were to choose thirds, like if you if you want or or even tens. It, it won't matter because uh, the time complexity is still going to be logarithmic. It's still going to be logarithmic in the, in the answer. But the coefficient in front might be quite big. <laughs> it might be just, it's like the graph shifted a little bit, but it's going to have the same. Yes. Form. Yes, it would mean that even if you were to use thirds instead of halves, uh, then it would still take you on the order of logarithm base 3. Uh, guesses to go all the way up and down, uh, but it might end up being something like two or three times as many guesses necessary for, for if you were doing it at base two, and, and unless uh, that I'm, and I mean that on average. Okay. O other questions. So two's just really convenient. Two's really convenient because then then the choice is just is essentially move left or move right. Whereas, so this, this, this thing that I drew, a binary tree, at every, at, at every node you either go left or right. But with a trinary tree, a tree that branches, that has three branches at each one, then you could say, well, which one of the three am I going to make? Okay, <clears throat> other questions? Okay, good. <clears throat> Last, introduce new concept. So there's a thing called a matrix. For those of you that have taken linear algebra, that's what I'm talking about. Um, well, just like, <laughs> just like a scale, the, the, the reals, we're going we're gonna to call them scalars. So we have scalars. An example of a scalar would be something like uh, 5. Okay, they're, they're, they're exactly what you think they are. 
Uh, then we have vectors. So, not just being fast and loose with it, you can think of a vector as being uh, like a way to collect together more than one scalar. You can think of it like that. So an example of a vector would be something like uh, 23 in the first coordinate and 70 in the second one. So in, in vectors, for, for vectors uh, in math classes, we're always going to construe vectors to be column vectors. Uh, that is to say, they're going to be, the first coordinate is the top one, and then you move down one, that's the second coordinate, you move down one, that's the third coordinate, not row vectors, for reasons that I'm just not going to really get into very much. Are row vectors technically a thing? They are a thing, but it's not good to refer to them both as vectors. So okay. re the, the more, a, a more proper name for a row vector is a covector. Okay. For, for, for reasons I'm just not going to get into. Gotcha. Uh, then we have a matrix, which is to say that well, if we can if we can uh, if we can start stacking these scalars this way, well, what if we stack them into a into a rectangle? So like two, three, seven, zero, like that. So that is to say that we have a we have a a scalar in the top left, a, a, a scalar in the top right, a scalar in the bottom left, a scalar in the bottom right. This matrix right here is referred to as a square matrix because the number of columns, there's two columns, is the same as the number of rows. Here's another matrix that's not square. So what's the number of columns? four columns, whereas the number of rows is two, right? So there's two rows, one, two, three, four columns. Okay, so matrices uh, are, are used a, a great deal in science and math. And the main thing I want to point out is that uh, matrices can, square matrices anyway, can be uh, multiplied with themselves. So you can do it is, it is possible to do, su supposing that the multiplication is compatible, you can do matrix times matrix, you can do matrix times vector, uh, but you're not going to be able to do vector times vector. Okay, and that, that ends up being an important realization uh, a little later. So, uh, for example, do we have time? Okay, we don't have time. So we'll start with matrix multiplication next time. Have a nice uh, Thursday.